Now I'd like to introduce you to an infrared rangefinder from Sharp. We'll review its features and connections, principle of operation, and calibration techniques. This is the IR rangefinder that's included in the NI MyRio Mechatronics kit. This is a product from Sharp, and this is what you actually see printed on the on the part itself, 2Y0A21. This is also known as the Digilent IR range sensor. Let's review the features of this device. It includes an infrared emitter and array sensor. Here's the emitter, and over here is the sensor. It has a range of 10 centimeters to 80 centimeters, and then a output voltage range of 2.3 down to 0.4. 2.3 volts corresponds to 10 centimeters, 0.4 corresponds to 80 centimeters. The measurement time is 38.3 plus or minus 9.6 milliseconds and an additional 5 milliseconds lag to update the output voltage. Power supply is 4.5 to 5.5 volts and it draws about 30 milliamps. The digital end part includes some extras. The actual part is the black structure on the top. Digilent also supplies this custom connector. This is a JST to Futaba style connector cable where we have the Futaba connector down here. Also we have a series diode in the VCC line and that series diode protects against accidental reverse power supply polarity. In terms of our three wires, we have ground is black, VCC is red, and the analog output voltage signal is yellow. Here's some applications for an infrared rangefinder, such as this device. You can use it for range and distance measurements, especially for robotics applications. That's a, a very important piece of information. You could use it as a proximity sensor and you could also use this as a touchless switch. Alright, the structure itself, taking a look at a close-up here where I've removed the body of the product with the two lenses that are located right here. Remove those lenses and we see the infrared emitter very small structure here which is an infrared LED. Then over here we have an infrared array sensor and this sensor is able to detect and produce a voltage that's proportional to the position of the light incident on that sensor. The infrared emitter is a pulsed or modulated signal in the tens of kilohertz range. The array sensor is tuned to the same frequency. And that means that the IR rangefinder is relatively insensitive to ambient light interference or shadows or other types of non-ideal situations. All right, I'd like to acquaint you with the principle of operation of this device. Here I've got my two lenses, the IR emitter and the array sensor, and I'm looking at this in side profile. Here's my reflective target. The IR light leaves the emitter reflects off the target and is then incident on the array sensor. Now imagine that the target moves to a farther range. That means that the light will bounce off the reflector and impinge on the array sensor at a different position. That's the key. The position of that light spot on the array sensor indicates the range of the object. Now let's apply some geometry so we can figure out how to translate that position into range. Here's the distance between the two lenses. Here's my range to the target, call that capital R. We notice this distance shows up right here, that is between the lens and the array sensor, I'll call that little r. And here's the distance between those two different spots of light call that little d. Now geometry tells us that we have similar triangles and that's the the key to understanding how to work with the output of this device. The little triangle d as a ratio with capital D is the same thing as little r to big R. 
So those two ratios are the same. Solving for the thing that we're trying to find, which is range, we see that it's based on having that distance from the array sensor in the denominator. Now what we actually get is output voltage, and so we could scale that by little k, and that gets us that physical distance. Notice that we've got three apparently unknown constants here, but we can stick all of those together into a single constant, capital K. That means that the range is going to be this calibration constant divided by the voltage we measure from the IR sensor. Well, let's take a look at then how you could come up with some calibration values for the sensor. First possibility, we could look at the data sheet and it tells us that we have 0.4 volts typical at 80 centimeters and 2.3 volts typical at 10 centimeters. Based on using range is the calibration constant divided by the output voltage, we would say 80 centimeters, 0.4 volts, solve for K, and we have 32 centimeter volts for that calibration constant. Now the problem is, is if we try the same thing with the other value from the data sheet, we get 23 centimeter volts. Again, these are typical numbers. It's not a very accurate way of getting a single value for K. Well, perhaps we could try taking an actual measurement from the device. I have a simple measurement apparatus here. I just have a cardboard box. I've taped the IR rangefinder sensor two inches above the lab bench. I have a meter stick, or you could use a yard stick here. Just butt it up against the box. I have another box, which is mostly white, and that can serve as a reflective target that I can move back and forth. With this single measurement method, I'll carefully place the box at a known range and then measure the resulting output voltage, VO. For example, I was using a yardstick with 10 inches and 1.08 volts measured. That means that the calibration constant is 27.4 centimeter volts, which we see is about midway between what we were getting from the data sheet values. The best technique involves making multiple measurements. In this case, you wanna take a series of output voltage measurements for a range of R values. Plot the R values versus the reciprocal voltage identify the region where the plot is linear, and then fit a first order line to that result. This first order line is based on now our familiar K constant, which serves as a scaling factor. And then the first order line probably is gonna have a non-zero offset as well. And that just adds to your accuracy of calibration. When measuring the output voltage, averaging can make a big difference. As an example, here's some MyRio LabVIEW code where I'm using the analog input to read the voltage from the IR rangefinder. Then I'm using the point-by-point -point AC and DC estimator, specifically looking at the DC output. I'm collecting samples at 50 milliseconds per sample and then averaging 20 of those together to get a single value. Now here I've collected a set of measurements and I'm plotting range as the independent variable and then the sensor voltage as the output variable. I'd like to point out here in this area of high slope, this is where we have the highest sensitivity at close range. Farther away, slope goes down, that means we have lower sensitivity farther away. This is an interesting feature right here. We have the same voltage, but two different ranges. And that's no good. Solution, you want to mount the sensor to ensure that the target is at least 10 centimeters away. That way you don't get that duplicate voltage possibility. Now I'm plotting that same voltage, but in reciprocal form, and then plotting range versus that reciprocal voltage. Here you can see a nice linear region showing up. And then I extract only that piece and fit a linear trend line. Trend line is indicated right here and that tells us we have 28.2 centimeter volts for the scale factor and 1.26 centimeters for the offset. 